They look and sound like something out of a James Bond film, but their capabilities surpass even 007's imagination. The nano quad rotors are light and agile enough to move and grasp objects in mid-air. They can turn, flip, and fly in formation. And while they're good with picks and drumsticks, University of Pennsylvania researcher Daniel Mellinger says they're really designed to save lives. The ability to put a camera on board these vehicles and have them collect information is a very powerful one. Uh, this is particularly valuable in situations uh, that are dangerous, so you can get uh, information in a situation without ever having to put a human in, in harm's way. And that's so you can imagine a scenario after a natural disaster where you send up a large team of these vehicles, for example, 20 of them, each with a camera, and they collect and gather information and create situational awareness about what's going on in the scene and uh, uh, then deliver that information to uh, first responders and then they can respond to the situation appropriately. Mellinger and his research partner Alex Kushliev have built several versions of the aerial vehicle using materials that are readily available at a hardware store. But their main objective has been to create machines that can fly in a swarm without crashing into one another. Each robot carries built-in magnets and sensors that work with a motion capture system. Infrared light is directed toward markers on each vehicle. The markers then reflect the light back into the cameras and a computer program tracks the markers to determine the vehicle's location. There is also an offboard base station that uses a software algorithm to communicate with the vehicle and direct its flight. The cool thing that we want to do is to eventually tran transfer this, uh, um, these algorithms to work outdoors. So it's currently very difficult um, because of different environmental factors like wind and you know, weather, but at least if we learn as much as possible about the vehicles themselves indoors, then we can basically we can uh, control them in a better outdoors. The team has conducted several experiments to see how effectively the vehicles can work as a team without flying into one another. One of the most encouraging involves the use of grippers and magnets. So what the vehicle can do is it can go and take the take its grippers. Uh, pick up a part and then fly around in the world and fly to the place where that part needs to be put in place and then place the part where it needs to go. And since the magnets are in the parts, the, the magnets can actually pull the part into place and it'll snap into place and the vehicle can let go and fly away and go get the next part. And so using this, uh, this infrastructure, we've used teams of up to three vehicles to build uh, structures containing up to 40 pieces. So what I want to show you next Professor Vijay Kumar of the university's GRASP lab recently introduced the robots at a lecture widely viewed online. Since it aired, the video has gotten thousands of hits. Kumar says he thinks people are simply fascinated by the entertainment value and possibilities of these aerial robots. In particular, we're sort of interested in pushing the autonomy front. Uh, we want to have these robots to be able to think for themselves, make decisions, and relieve a lot of the burden that currently falls on human operators. And that could be in the fields of search and rescue, construction, or just household convenience. And who knows? A starring role in the next Bond adventure may be more than just a flight of fancy. Sharon Reich, Reuters.